Hello everyone, welcome to Ginger Gear. My name is Gingerbeard, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create buttons that open up doors in Click Team Fusion 2.5. So to get started, we're going to go to the frame editor, which we're already here, and we're going to place two active, uh, sorry, four active objects, and we only need technically three for this. The fourth one is optional. Okay, so now we're going to name the three that we'll need to player. The next one's going to be door. And the next one after that is going to be button. Alright, so these are the three we're going to need. This is going to be the extra one, which this will be wall. Because what I want to do is kind of encase the player into this wall right here, or inside this room. And they're going to have a door here, which you're going to have to hit a button to open. And for, th for this, if you're following, um... You don't have to necessarily make the wall if you don't want to, if you're just testing it out. Just kind of helps kind of add to the uh, example. Okay, so now what we're going to need to do is change all the graphics because we don't want to keep them all as this diamond. So I'm going to change the player to a green color. And I'm going to go to the hotspot and make sure that it is in the middle. And to do that, you just hit the I and then you hit that little middle button right here. All right. Now for the door, we're going to change this one to be, I guess a red color would be fine. So we want to fill that in. And what we're going to do here, we're going to go on and stretch this one. So I'm going to go on and change the height of this to 128. Now we remember to hit this little stretch button. There we go. So now we got this little rectangle here. And what we're going to need to do now is first, let's place the hot spot on the corner of this. And to do that, we can just hit that. Same thing we do, but we just hit that little button up here. And next thing we're going to need to do is create a new animation for this because what we're going to be wanting to do is have the door open when you press that button. So to do this, we're going to come down to the little animation tab. And let's name this open. Okay. So what we can do to kind of save on redoing that process, we could just go over here to this to our previous animation and we can go on and copy this so we can click on the um, on frame one down here and we can go on and copy go to the other one and we're going to click on the frame here on the diamond that's on the open animation and we can go and hit paste so there we go now we have it all there but we don't want the second frame right there with the diamond. So let's go on and delete this. There we go. So now we have our standard where it's closed. And now we have our open. But we need to make an opening real quick. So you could go on and make an animation of it opening. But I'm going to kind of help for the simplicity of this and for timing reasons. I'm just going to make it a one frame open. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
going to kind of just erase some of it. I'm not going to get super clean about it. Just kind of take off some of it. Yeah, like right about there. That's good enough. Okay. So now we have our door. And now we're going to need the button. So with the button, we're going to be needing to change its color. Now I'm going to change this color to a very bright color. So I'm going to choose a light blue. So what we're wanting to do is have it where the lighter color will signify on. And then when you press the button, we're going to have it go to a darker color. And that will be uh, when it's turned off or activated. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our animation thing or our animation list and we're going to go and hit a new one and we're going to name this one um, on. And it's going to do the same thing but since we're not going to need the exact same um, since we're not having to repeat the process and it's not big uh, hassle to do we can just repeat it here so instead of a lighter color like we just used we're going to use a darker color so something like this so when you press the button it means it's now activated and the door should open okay so uh, let me remember if I did something oh yeah that's right go to each frame and remember to set this little um, hot spot to the top left corner and we'll do the same thing here which has already been done alright after that now we need to do the wall so I'm gonna go on and click this one I'm gonna also put the hot spot to the top left and let's go on and change its color I think I might do I don't know, a dark purple. Okay, so that's it of that. Now we need to go on and to assign some alterable values. Uh, we need to assign some to the door and the button. So first thing we're going to do is go to the door. And now we're going to go to the properties tab down here and we're going to go to the AZ tab and over here where it says values we want to see alterable value and alterable string we don't want to mess with the string we just want to mess with the uh, values so we're going to click on new at least twice and we're going to get these two we get two alterable values here and what we're going to need to do is name them we're going to name the first one ID and we're going to name the second one open okay so what we'll be doing here is um, this is going to make it where once we press the button we're going to switch this to one and this will open and the ID is going to be matching to the button that we're wanting to press and you'll see how we're going to do it in just a second. So I'm going to switch the ID to 1 and keep open at 0. Oh, and also you can name these anything you want. Um, I just name them this, it just makes it easier to tell, but you, you can name them anything you want. Alright, so since we got all the values down for for the door, now we're going to click on the button. So we're going to click on the button, and the same thing will come up. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to the AZ tab, Properties, and we see the alterable values. We're going to click two times as well to get two alterable values. And now we're going to name these. I'm going to name the first one ID, just like door. And I'm going to name the other one on. Okay. So we want to keep on the zero, but we want to set the ID to one because we want it to match the door. Because what we're going to have it is when the player 
uh, moves over the button, presses the button, it's going to check for that same, if that door has the same ID, and it's going to open it. So, the last thing we got to do, since we got all our variables on, uh, the one thing we're going to need now is to get the player to move. So to do this, we're going to go to the player, and just for simplicity, um, and to save time in the video, I'm not going to do any kind of custom movements or anything like that. I'm just going to go and use a built-in one. So I'm going to use the default eight directions. Keep everything default. So now, what we're going to do, since we have our players able to move, we have our wall, and we have our button, and we have our door, the next thing we're going to do now is add a group. So what a group is, what it does, when you come to, say, you click on the door, and you go to the events tab right here at the properties, and you're going to see a thing called qualifiers. If you click on this and hit edit, you're going to be at this objects qualifier, and what you want to do is hit add, and you're going to see this list of qualifiers here. You can pick any that you want um, to assign, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the door. But the one thing is, what is a qualifier? So the qualifier is a way where you can group a bunch of objects together. So say for instance I had three doors and I want the player to collide with each of them. In the event editor I would have to make multiple events saying like when player collisions with this object and this one and this one I have to keep repeating that especially if I want different colored doors. But, if I wanted to, I can assign this qualifier to them, and this will make it only one event that controls the collision for all of them. So it's really neat. Okay, so after that, I'm going to go on and select the door, and I'm going to go on and hit OK. So now whenever we make uh, more doors, we can assign the door qualifier to it. It don't have to be the door qualifier, again, it can be whatever you want. But I just use it just to kind of help tell what things are. Okay, now we need one more qualifier. We need to go to the button. And we're going to go to the properties tab. Hit events. And we're going to go to qualifiers again. And we're going to go here to add. And now we want to find a qualifier for this one. Now if I'm mistaken, I have looked through here before. And I couldn't find anything for buttons. Oh wait, here we go. Here's a button right there. Never mind. Um, and we can go on and click OK. Now, what we're going to do is let's go and take this wall right here and let's build a little area. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the wall and click over here and grab the paint mode. And I'm just going to kind of build a little something, just, just, a, just a little room. Yep, oh, well, I messed up a bit. And. There we go. Let's kind of delete these. Alright, so now we have a little room. We're going to have this where the player is boxed in. Um, and let's go and make an area for our door. There we go. There. So now we have a little area where our door is. But if we go on and run the application, You can see we can move, but we can go through everything, and there's no function to nothing. So what we're going to need to do is we need to go on and program all of it. And in the event editor, we're going to right click right here on this one. I'm going to make a group of events. Now the way, I think there might be a few ways you can do this, but this is the way I do it. I just kind of right click on the one that's right there on the number of that event and I just kinda go in here to insert and hit a group of events and we can go and name it and I'm gonna name this one stuff because this is just gonna be our collision this won't be the main thing and then I'm gonna make another one so I'm gonna get back on this other line and hit insert 
a group, and this one will be called Doors. And this is where we're going to put all of our code in for, or all of our events, for all of our doors and buttons. Alright, so now let's go and handle collisions. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go over here and click New Condition, and we're going to go to the player, and we're going to do collisions with another object, and that object is going to be the wall. And over here, we want to go to the player, this little square where the player is. And we're going to go to movement and stop. So now when we hit the wall, we'll stop. But let's go on and do the same thing for the door. Okay, so what we want to do is, we're going to change this. So we're going to hit, we're going to click it and we're going to edit. We'll right click and hit edit. And instead of this, we're going to use the door qualifier. So now whatever um, object that has the door qualifier on is going to start closing. Or not closing, it's going to be stopping the player. Okay, so now we're going to do movement and stop, the same thing. So there we go. So now we have collision. So if we run the application, yep, we kind of can't get out of our door. We can't get out through the walls. We're kind of stuck here now. Okay, so now what we're going to need to do, we need to go on and set when we hit a button, we want to open up the doors. So to do that, we're going to go over here to our group of events over here at doors. We're going to hit new condition. And now we want to have it where if the player collisions with another object, and instead of the door, we're going to do the button. And we want to add something else in here, so we want to add a second condition. So we want to right click on it and hit insert. And we want to go to the, the, the button. And we want to go to the alterable values. And we want to compare an alterable value. And now what we're going to be doing is, it's going to say uh, choose a value, we have ID. And it's going to choose a comparison method, and we're going to do equal. And we want this to be if basically the ID of the button is equal to, and instead of zero, we're going to come down here to our door qualifier, right click it, and now we're going to go to values, and value A to M, and retrieve ID. And there we go. So now, if we hit OK, we have it where if the ID is equal to that button, it's also going to do something. So two of these conditions have to be met now for this action to work. So now what we're going to need to do now is go to the button. Oh, sorry. We need to go to the group where the buttons are. And we need to go on and start a for each a for each loop. Oh, here we go. So what we need to do is go on and hit for each and now we gotta name our loop. So we're gonna just name this open. Okay. So basically what we have done is we have taken um, we have set a condition to if the collision between the player and the button, if you both collision with the if you collision with the button and the ID of that button is equal to that door that you just pressed, we want a loop to start. And what this loop is doing is for each button you have clicked, we're going to have something to happen. So, now I'll show you what we're about to do. Now we need to go to our group, which is going to be buttons. And we're going to go under the tab loop and on each object. And now we need to type in the name of the loop. So we're going to do open. And also, let's go on and do the same thing, this ID. 
and uh, this ID check. We're going to go on and just kind of put that, we're going to drag it and hover over the 7 and there you go. So now we're also checking for the ID as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, when this happens, we're going to set the door. We got to go to this little the door tab right here. Come all the way over here, and we're going to the alter of a value. We're going to set its value, not its ID, but we're going to click on this, and we're going to do open instead. And we're going to set it to one. And for the same thing, we want to do for the button. Um, actually, I made a mistake there. Um, you want to take just going to delete that. You want to go to your doors group. And once you go to your door group, you go to alterable value, set, and not the ID, but open to one. That's better. Now I want to do the same thing for the button, for the button group. What we need to do is go to the alterable value, and we're going to set not the ID but on to one and after we're done with that we're gonna go on and check for it so we're gonna go to a new condition and we're gonna go to door on the group and we're going to set or we're gonna have to compare the value not the ID but open is equal to one and what we want to do is if the door is equal to one we want to go to the same tab where the group door is we want to right click and we are going to set the animation this is where the animation comes in that we made we want to change this animation sequence to open and now we're going to go on and do the same so we can go and drag the open and drag it down one because that would automatically um, copy it so if we take click it and drag it onto the new condition under it we're going to edit this we can just grab the button from up here and we can just drag it and place it in the place of the door so now it will automatically change it to on because it what it does is when you switch it it changes to the exact point that the other one was and since we had open and on on um, alterable value B it was able to automatically set it there so now what we want to do is we want to also change the buttons animation to oh wrong way we're gonna go here to the buttons group animation and we're gonna change the sequence to on alright but also to prevent from the loop to keep happening just a little security what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the on which is equal to one and we're gonna take and drag it up to the 7 and the um, and we're also going to change it, well we don't have to do it for the 7 we're going to remove that, but we just want to at least drag it onto the line 6 and this we're going to change it instead of 1 to 0 so this is like an extra check for when you step on the button instead of having it uh, keep running the loop it would just run once because it's checking for if on is equal to zero because once you press it the first time it's going to set that button to one so this won't keep running just helps kind of clean it up a bit okay so after we got all that out of the way I think we're finally ready to test it so what we're going to do, we're going to run the application and now we can see our player 
We can move around. We can collision with the walls, with our door, and we still can't get out of here. But as soon as we press that button, there we go. Now we have our door opening and our buttons now a darker color signifying it's activated and now you can go free as much as you want and with this method which is really neat you can have multiple doors and it's easy to do it by just easily making where you have cloned the door make sure it has the same um, the same qualifier on it and just change the ID and do the same thing for the button and you can change its ID and it will do the exact same thing. So you can have multiple doors in this method and you can just try it out, experiment, whatever you like. If you found this helpful be sure to leave a thumbs up and if you have any questions on how some of this stuff works be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to help you um, and subscribe for more videos and I'll see you later. Goodbye.